Okay, so thank you very much, Yaskaz, and thank you to the hosts for inviting us, and, and, and congratulations on um, 30 years of, of very important work, and um, we wish you the, the, the very best for the next 30 and the 30 beyond that, and, and trust that it will carry on for many years to come. So, so DNA sequencing has become um, a, an activity that is, is important, is critical, in, um, in a great part of, of what we do in science, but it goes well beyond science. And so if you look um, at the application of, of DNA sequencing, we can um, understand genomes, we can read genomes, and we can understand how genomes are um, active and in which tissues and which parts of plants they're active. We can apply it to understand the basic mechanisms of life, we can apply it to help with human health, medical research. We can apply it in the clinic. We can develop uh, new ways of producing food, new ways of, 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 of growing plants. Um, we can do forensics. We can do border control. So sequencing is a really important activity that has application within science and goes far beyond science. And this is the result of, of, of very rapid uh, and, uh, and important changes in the core technologies that we use to do sequencing. So it was then with great foresight uh, in the 1980s that um, uh, the, the, the people that came before um, uh, Karen, Conrad, Eileen, and I, and, and Yaz, uh, started to think that it would be very important to capture the output of all of the sequencing activity that was to happen and to put this in an organized, structured system such that it could be shared and made available for people uh, to use uh, as, as, as they wished and to, to make sense of the data and to get the maximum benefit from the data. Um, so back in the 1980s, uh, we designed what was then a, um, a very modern way of doing this. We designed databases and data structures to share data in an organized way. Um, and essentially, that still persists. We still have that. Uh, we've done a lot of other things, and we've extended. Um, but essentially, that some of the, the early thinking, the early planning, uh, still lives on at the technical level. But actually, more importantly, um, the concept is still there that you put all of the world's data into one place, you make it freely available for everybody to get maximum benefit, and, and by sharing the data around the world and make it op making it open, um, we can maximize the benefit to humanity, and the benefit to the planet um, from doing all of this sequencing. Um, so that's the ethos behind the global data sharing, and that's the ethos behind the DDBJ, um, GenBank, NCBI, and, 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 and what we do in EBI, ENA. Um, we had a revolution in, in um, the methods that produce sequencing data, and we have far more data than we used to have. I'll come on to that. Um, so we've had to change technically enormously, and the, 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 the World Wide Web has been invented as well since we started out. So things have changed a lot, and we've adapted with the times. But we continue as this really key foundation for doing science. and. Um, uh, celebrated, actually, for the way in which we do data sharing and a model for other scientific activities to start to share their data as well. So what we're going to do is tag through um, uh, so the, the, the four of us. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about INIS DC itself, um, uh, and I've done much of that. Um, I'll talk about what we do in Europe, and then I'll give an example of how uh, sequence data can be used um, in marine science. Uh, Conrad will talk about how we organize species names and do taxonomy. Eileen will talk about um, species identification using sequencing, and Karen will talk about uh, safe supplies of food, assuring safe food, and, um, uh, and, and how sequencing is used to, to, to combat infectious disease. So the, the scope of the INSDC is data sharing um, of sequence data. And as I think we, we heard from Yaz, we have this data exchange a three-way data exchange on a regular basis. All of the data that are put into DDBJ by scientists get pulled over to NCBI, to, to EBI. All of the data that are put into EBI get pulled to DDBJ and NCBI and so on. So all of the data exists in each site, accessible um, at each of those sites. And we cover sequence data. We cover um, the information that is required to make, that, that goes around sequence data, so which sample has been sequenced, how has it been sequenced, what was the experiment, um, and then we capture a lot of the interpretation of the sequence data. So these are genome assemblies, these are annotation profiles, the, pro the genes and the proteins and so on. 
Um, and so we capture a range of data types around sequencing. Um, we do our exchange. We work um, very actively on data standards to assure that the data that we're capturing will be useful and, and will be um, integrated into a single set. Um, uh, we, uh, we promote open unrestricted access. We do it ourselves, but we also promote it for other communities. Um, we have globally comprehensive coverage because we have the three sites around the world. Um, uh, we are the scientific database of record. If, you, um, if you, you're doing publicly funded science, the convention is well established that you put your data into one of our databases and it gets into the system. Um, in fact, it's difficult to publish, um, uh, publish scientific publications without doing that if you have sequenced data. Um, but also, we're a, we're, a, we're a forum where science is played out. So we're a forum where um, uh, uh, the, the, the discussion about different data sets, the discussion of scientific concepts is played out with the data. Um, so some of the data are very live. They're used in a very live way for discussion. So I won't go through um, everything, but everything is big when we, when we think about DNA sequence. Um, so there are a lot of data. Um, there are a lot of studies, a lot of experiments. There are a lot of users. Um, so I'll just highlight a few things. Um, we have uh, 230 million genes um, over a petabase of, of pairs of, of DNA uh, sequence, uh, base pairs. Uh, Two million taxa uh, uh, that we classify. Uh, a third of a million uh, literature publications, so scientific papers that reference um, data that's in the database. Um, we have hundreds, minimally hundreds of thousands of users, but because we share, we, we forward our data to many other sites and it's presented onwards to, to, um, by third parties, um, actually there are likely to be millions uh, and, and tens of millions perhaps of users who, who are impacted by the data. Um, and it's a comparatively small number of staff that, that maintain that. The growth is, is important. But, but the scale, um, the, the, the scale is, um, is better seen in, 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 a, in an analogy. So if you took a DNA molecule and you stretched it out so it was linear, so it was in a straight line, um, in 2005, that would have got you, that molecule would have gone from here to, um, this is the Shomeiken Hotel where we've been staying, um, so that would be uh, 400 Feet, uh, meters or so. Um, but now, if you do the same thing, you stretch that molecule of DNA out, then you can get all the way from Mishima to Hawaii. And next year, you'll probably get all the way to Central America. And then the next year, you'll be going to Europe in both. So, so the growth is very, very rapid and of increasing rate. Um, and so technically, it's challenging. Uh, but it's, it's, it makes it um, even more important to do because people have to rise to solve those, those technical challenges. So many people, even people in science, don't think very much about INSDC, about DDBJ, about NCBI, EBI. And, and the reason for that is that we are infrastructure. And so infrastructure is really important, and everyone values it, but they don't think about it much. And when it's working well, they don't think about it at all. Um, and so we don't think about our power supply, necessarily. We don't think about the, the, the air traffic control and, and our, our transport uh, systems working well, until things go wrong, um, the power supply fails, and then we notice it, and then we complain, or, or the, or the um, weather stops flights, uh, whatever it is. So infrastructure is, when it's going really well, it's just used and it just works. And, and, and in a way, we are infrastructure. And so we're not, um, we, we support, we're fundamental to many different scientific studies, but actually you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you really drill down. Um, but we're, we're critical to maintain, and, 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 and having the three partners is, is a very good way of assuring that. So the European situation. Uh, so in Europe, we work very collaboratively. Um, across science, actually, there's a very European or layers of European organization, and, and so many things are, are international. Um, the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, uh, which is where my institute lies, um, has since the 1970s been organizing scientific um, life science activities in, in Europe. Um, it now has a number of sites, but it has member states that work together uh, to, to, to put the best um, brains together, the best machines together, and the best facilities, and to, to do the best with uh, best we can with the science. And part of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory is the bioinformatics um, activity. 
uh, which takes the form of an institute on its own. So we are in, um, uh, in a very picturesque site uh, just outside Cambridge in, in the United Kingdom. Um, and this is us a few years ago, actually, probably more now. Um, so our business is providing bioinformatics tools and services. Um, so we have the, the genes and the genomes, so the DNA sequence databases that I'll talk about. Um, we have uh, protein databases, structure databases, uh, chemicals databases, literature databases, and so on. So we, we cover the spectrum of, um, of data types, and we provide services, training, and, and tools on all of these. Uh, and so this is a big activity, and it's a, it's a major um, uh, it's, it's a major service that, that, we, that we provide to, to Europe, but also to the world. And I don't know if, if there's, I won't spend any time doing this, but do I have a pointer? Okay, sorry, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have touched that. Um, so I was going to show you the live, the live version. Um, so, so this is a map that we, that we have at EBI. It's showing the, the, the people hitting uh, diff different services provided by EBI, and the size of the, the, the dot is the, is the, represents the number. Um, it's interesting because you see in the morning, you see um, uh, in the, the European morning, you see activity around Asia in the middle of the day. This was taking the middle of the day. You see activity in Europe, and then it moves over. You see it move around the world as the world wakes up. Um, but it's, it's a global activity providing these services. People are coming every or many times every second to, to pull data, to put data in, or, or whatever it might be. So um, the, the European Nucleotide Archive is the, is the EBI's uh, sequence database, so it's our part of the three-way collaboration. I won't say anything in huge detail, but our work, like that of DDBJ and NCBI, is about working with the scientists to get the data into the system in an organized and structured way, maintaining it, curating it, and uh, uh, presenting it to the world, and, um, and then exchanging it with the, the, the global partners um, and making it searchable and, and adding tools to make it, um, make it usable by science. Um, so this is just to show how we, we act as a foundation. So the, the, the sequence database is in the middle of this circle. That's um, ENA. And then we have a number of, um, in this ring here, we have all of the other databases at EBI that are deriving data. They pull data routinely from ENA um, and they uh, do something, they add some value, they build different views, visualizations, they do genome browsing or whatever it might be. Um, so here we have Uniprot, Ensemble, and so on. Um, so these are built on top of the data that flows in um, from ENA, but often from, from DDBJ or from NCBI. Um, and then uh, they offer various services and tools. And so really we're the middle of a very big, um, a big developed system. And at the European level, again, um, that this is just EBI, but you can see all of the nodes in this is another European organization to promote bioinformatics um, uh, connectivity within Europe, um, that we have a lot of dependencies and extra services, ways in which people can access the data through um, different tools and different, uh, different sites around Europe. Um, so it's very much a, a foundation layer. So um, just to give an example, of, of how it's used from the, the marine science domain. This is something that we've been involved in, one of the, one of the projects that we're quite close to um, at EBI. Um, the oceans are really important. I probably don't need to say this. They are um, critical. Well, they, they hold a lot of interest. There's a lot of diversity within the oceans that is yet to be explored. So there's a scientific interest. Um, but also, they are key to regulating the planet. Oxygen supply, for example, is uh, the, 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 the much of the the biogeography, much of the geography we see is, is influenced by the, the life that's in the sea. Um, but also they're a, they're a food supply, um, a primary food supply, a direct food supply from fishing, but, a, but, a, but there's, there are whole food webs within the oceans. So, um, so, so the oceans are really, really critical and, and um, uh, it's essential that we explore them, so we're involved in this project. And the EBI part of this is to help with the data. Um, to put the data into the public domain, into INSDC, and to help people to use it and to do the analysis. And, um, uh, and we work with uh, a group um, uh, who are running this, uh, a European group, um, in a project called Tara Oceans. And so this is the Tara herself. She is a, um, a, a sailing vessel, but a fully equipped uh, laboratory at sea. And she travels, this is now a bit out of date, there are some more, more um, voyages to list here, but she travels on these big expeditions, sampling routinely and applying lots of sequencing and other methods to, to, to the water. Um, 
are producing important um, data sets. And so she's traveled um, over half a million, uh, uh, covered over half a million square kilometers, tens of thousands of samples and so on. And, and, and from this, we've now been able to identify um, 40 million genes, a large amount of data. But this is a real resource that, that has, has almost unlimited potential for, for scientists to come in and make sense of all of this. Um, so with uh, colleagues in Germany, um, the analysis is made available um, and, 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 and it's now open for people to, uh, to come and mine and, and make sense of it. Here's just one example of what's been found. So this isn't our work, this is, um, uh, this is work um, that's been based on the data set. So um, it turns out that you can identify, using the sequencing data, um, you can identify, you can profile which species live in which places. places. Um, even before you know that these species, which these species are, they may not be discovered yet, but you know that there is something that, that, that you can identify as being likely to be a species, um, and you can see it in this place and that place, but not this place. And so you can plot these out, and using the sequencing um, data, at high throughput, you can see the distribution of certain species of, say, diatom, and certain species of ciliate, and you can see where they intersect. So if things are in the same place, um, uh, and, and you, are, you have statistical power to be able to be, be confident about that, um, then you may, you may infer that there is some ecological connection between them. And so using the sequencing, we've co-localized organisms and been able to go to image data. So Tara has parallel image, pattern, uh, image profiling. Uh, so these are microscopic images. And, um, and you can, using the sequencing, you can find in the vast data set likely candidates where two organisms live closely together. And here's an example of a diatom and a ciliate that were, were discovered from the sequence data, it's likely to be connected in some ecological way. And sure enough, you have a very close physical, the blue is one, the, the green is the other, a very close physical relationship. Um, and, and so discoveries like this are frequent and we'll, more and more of this will come from the, um, from the Tara project as just one example. Uh, so now I hand over to Conrad. <laughs> 